Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. We're well into January here in Northern Michigan, which means my name has officially changed from Andy to, hey, you got a plow truck? I never really had any plans on becoming a plow guy, and I may be the only one who sounds like cheese grits when he talks, but life is funny. Here we are. So today I'm gonna take y'all around with me. We're gonna plow a couple driveways. I'm gonna show y'all some of the techniques and kind of planning that goes into where I'm gonna push all the snow. I learned very quickly after running my first plow truck, it ain't all that simple. So I'm gonna show y'all what I'm looking at with the driveway. And we'll have a little fun. Now you may notice, Andy, it's it's still actively snowing right now. You're gonna plow while it's snowing. That's like wiping me. Well, yep, and that's kind of what we got going on here. It's coming down now. We're gonna get a break in the afternoon and then all weekend it's gonna dump. So I'm trying to hit everything before another two feet gets packed on top of it. Should be a good time. actually fairly steep so we've got to take that into consideration the house and parking area is up at the top of the hill so what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna drive straight up and get a nice pile started for the season I always try and plow in four low it's a little easier on the transmission and everything else So we got everything pushed this way and then out that way so they have a good turnaround. As you can see, I definitely cleared more than they needed to turn around, but that was on purpose. This is my first plow for the year over here because we had an early winter melt off. But from here on, the snow is permanent. So I need to make sure I've got space for these piles to build up. So now we're onto the driveway. We've got probably a good seven or 8% grade at the worst part of the driveway. So it was a much safer bet to drive on through it and then push it back down. That way we got inertia and crap behind us or working with us. I don't know what inertia is. Anyway, heavy truck go downhill easier on slippy ground. Now normally on a long driveway like this, I'm gonna angle the blade from one side to another just to kind of shave it down and, and push the banks off to the sides. But since we've only got about six inches on the ground, a true six inches, not like a man six inches. We're gonna keep the blade straight and we're gonna build up a big pile in front of us. And then when we get to the bottom, we're gonna turn the blade and push it off to the side. So two things worth mentioning. One, it wasn't a big pile. This driveway has got a fair amount of ruts in it. And it looks like the snow kind of filled in as we went. Plus it had been packed down from driving over it a bunch of times. And the second thing is I just pushed a lot of dirt. See, there's two types of cutting edges on a snow plow. You've got the regular cutting edge, which is what I've got on here. And then you've got what's called a yard guard. It's just a basically a two inch steel pipe that runs on the bottom there. Standard blade is gonna be better at scraping it's gonna get all the way down and sometimes you're gonna push some dirt and some grass out of the way and the yard guard rides over that surface but the problem with running the pipe on the bottom of it is that every time you do it you're depositing a real thin layer of snow and ice that gets run over multiple times by the end of the season you got an ice rink on your driveway running with the pipe is also easier on the truck but i think old juanita can take it so now that we got our initial path through here all i'm going to do is run back and forth with the blade angled push a little more snow off to each side give myself as much space as possible to add snow throughout the season and this one will be in good shape all right so we got that one knocked out we're on to the next one. that driveway is for a friend of mine I do it for 40 bucks. Now there's two different ways that people can charge for plowing services. You can do per push, or you can do it on like a monthly or a seasonal contract. For me personally, I like to have a little bit of both of them actually, because when I calculate the seasonal contract, I'm doing it based off of 25 snow events per year. That's 25 times a year. I've got three inches or more on the ground that need to get pushed out of the way. So that's the calculation I use when I determine how much I'm gonna charge for the season. This next one that we're going to is two vacation cabins. They're on a seasonal rate. So for 1600 bucks, I'm keeping them open all year. In many ways, it's a lot like cutting grass in the 
out. It's a business that it kind of seems like everybody does it. And a lot of people end up trying to undercut each other. Like, oh, you'll do it for 30? I'll do it for 25. For me personally, though, I don't try and undercut anybody. You got a minimum charge of 25 bucks for a real simple, short, easy driveway. And it just goes up from there. The biggest thing that I got going is I show up when I say I'm going to, which is more than a lot of people can say. So that's a good place to start. It'll never make you a millionaire, but if your work is outside and you've got six or seven months worth of snow throughout the year, it's definitely a good option. Now, of course, you're looking at those numbers as gross. You've got to keep expenses in mind, repairs on the truck, at least if you're me and you're good at breaking stuff. Plus, every now and again, you got to get coffee. What do you mean I'm not welcome in here? Obnoxious. That was completely unprovoked. I didn't do a <laughs> thing. So what are you drinking today? Pushing snow. This frog is all water tight. <laughs> Don't you get tired of it? You? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You know, all I ever hear from you is, I ain't got no friends. Nobody likes me. You ever think the problem is you? No, it's never me. It's always them. Okay. Always them. I think the problem is her. Get out of here. Well, I don't know why Patty feels compelled to make my life difficult every time I walk in there. But hey, at least they had toilet paper this time. That was a nice change of pace. So the next one that we're on to is a good example of just a uh, 25 minimum job. All I'm doing is a couple straight pushes back, a couple straight pushes to the side, and we're out. The whole thing will be done in less than 10 minutes. That doesn't sound good. Oh, never mind. It was just a transfer case. I didn't have it pushed in all the way. Sometimes it likes to pop out. So while I'm pushing snow, there's a couple things that I'm always keeping an eye on because they can cause real problems for me real quick. I want to keep an eye on my voltage because that plow motor uses a lot to run up and down. Keeping an eye on my transmission temperature because the Turbo 350 has a non-lockup torque converter. It can generate a lot of heat when you got a mountain of snow in front of you. And I'm watching my engine temperature because, well, I don't want to overheat. But since I'm keeping it in four low the whole time, transmission never really gets warm. I haven't seen the engine get warm. And the two batteries that I got in here are doing a pretty good job of keeping up with the plow motor. If I did a million back and forth, I may see it drop, but as a whole, we're staying in pretty good shape. Now we're on to the last ones for today, these two cabins that we got out here. We're kind of down this longer private road that's not uh, maintained by anybody. There's a fair chance I may need to plow my way into these come this weekend. They've got guests coming, we've got to keep them open. Biggest challenge with this one is that we've got a whole lot of curves and stuff to work around. It's very tight. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so we got in here just fine, but it's not just the driveways that we're doing. We got to get about a quarter mile of the road before we even get into here. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top and we're gonna do a big push straight through. Now we're onto the driveways themselves. Now when we do these, we've got a few curves to follow, especially on the second one. And what I want to do while I'm going through there is make sure I keep my blade completely perpendicular to the snow in front of me. So I'm turning that blade as I follow the curve. Because if I'm turning left and the blade is angled to push the snow off to the right, I'm going to cut a strip about that narrow and we'll get it out of the way. It'll take a little finagling, but I think we'll get it just fine. So as I had mentioned before, that was a lot of back and forth and up and down and you know, my voltage has dropped off. I need to, I still need to see about getting a high amp alternator for this, but we'll let it sit for a minute, rev it a bit, push the second driveway. And now 
the last thing that we got to do, at least for this one, is, uh, well, the old-fashioned way. All right, y'all. That's about it. I actually had a couple other driveways in there that I didn't include because there was nothing special about them. But we got her done for today, and we'll be doing it again in a couple more days. Northern Michigan winter can be brutal. It's been fairly mild this year. But y'all, I truly enjoy pushing snow out of the way. And you know what? Sometimes you also get a nice view with it. The way I see, you can either complain about the weather or turn it into cash. So far, just this morning and uh, let's see, it's been about three hours. And that includes the extra time it takes to film and talk to y'all. We burned about $20 in gas and we pushed about $300 worth of snow out the way. Even though sometimes snow removal can be a race to the bottom in terms of price, there's still good money to be made. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed and I hope you learned something. I love you and God bless. Andy, why aren't you drinking coffee out of your Stanley Thermos? Why didn't you bring your Stanley Thermos from home, Andy? Why didn't you do that, Andy? Simple.